Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to use the if function, the immediate if function, to return future dates based on some criteria. Today's question comes from Nancy from Clarksville, Tennessee. She's not a member, but you see, I still do answer questions from non-members from time to time, especially when it comes from doctors and nurses and people helping to fight the pandemic. Nancy says, I'm having trouble using the date add function with the if function. I've got a field named exposure type, which could be positive or contact. If the exposure is positive, I need a date 11 days after the exposure date. If it's contact, I need 15 days. How can I do this? Well, Nancy, let me set up a little database here and show you how to do this. All right, here's my simple database template. Let me set up a table just like yours. I'm going to put in here my ID, which is my auto number. Every table should have an ID. I'll just put in here first name, short text. I'll put in exposure, exposure date. Now, I in my classes, I recommend you don't use spaces in your field names. So I would never make a field called exposure date. I would make it like that. But just to keep with what you've got going on in your database, I'll leave it like that for you. All right, that'll be a date time field. Now here's the thing, there are many different ways you can set this up. You want to put in here your follow, let's call it the follow-up date. You didn't give me a name for whatever field you want this to be called. I'll call it the follow-up date. Now you can store this in the table using what's called a calculated field. I personally don't like using calculated fields. I prefer doing this in a query, which I'll show you in a minute. But I'll show you how to do it in a table just in case this is how you've got your database set up. Now, the nice thing about the way Access treats dates is that you don't have to use the date add field if you're working with whole days. A value of one in Access equals one day. So if you want to value 11 days in the future, you just say plus 11. So if I wanted this to be the exposure date plus a week, I can say right here equals exposure date and see, this is one of the reasons I don't like using spaces in my field names, because if I didn't have spaces in my field names, I wouldn't have to use those square brackets. Plus seven. All right, just put that in there. Hit OK. All right, you've got your exposure date plus seven. All right, save this. Now, you called your table exposures. Exposures. I prefer ending my tables with T's, and I like keeping them all singular. But again, that's just me. We'll call it exposures. All right, no primary key defined. Say yes, that makes our auto number our primary key. And now when I open up my exposures table, if I put in here Joe was exposed on 1-1, it gets the date automatically. All right, so that's one way you can do it. Now you have two criteria. You want to use an if function. This I just wanted to show you plus seven gives you one week in the future. All right, let's go back in here, design view. Now you've got an exposure type field as well. All right, exposure type. So let's add that in here, exposure type. And you've got this, I'm assuming, stored as a text value because you've got positive or contact. Again, I wouldn't store it that way. I'd use a related table and have either like a one or a two in this field, but that's a whole different ballgame. I'm going to assume you don't know much about uh, database normalization and related tables, so we'll just work with the data that you've got. It's not the best way to build it, but we'll, we'll teach you what you need to do to get your database working. Okay, so... Your exposure type in here, you said, can be two values. You got positive, and you've got contact. We'll put someone else in here in this in this value down here. So we'll put Sue in here on uh, two one. Okay, and you want the exposure date to change based on this over here. Okay, so let's go back into design view. Okay, so your follow up date. I'll move this down to the bottom now. I like to keep all the calculated stuff at the end. And my queries. I don't usually do calculated fields and tables. Millions of reasons why I won't get into it in this video. Okay, so down here, we're going to say if the ex uh, exposure type, and you could just pick from the list here if you want to, if the exposure type equals positive, comma, what do you want your exposure date or your follow up date to be? That's going to be what, uh, 11 days? So just like that, comma, the false part, if it's not positive, okay, we can do exposure date, exposure date, plus 15, close your parentheses. If you only have two values like this, positive and contact, you only have to deal with 
whether it's positive or not. Now, if you had five or six different values in here, you'd have to use either nested if functions, which become a whole lot more complicated, or I would recommend using a second table. All right. But this should work for what you want it to do. Okay, let's close this, save changes, go back into the exposures table. All right, and you can see already now this is working. Okay, exposure date of 1-1 one, one positive means 11 days in the future. That's on the 12th. All right, 2-1 of contact, give me 15 days in the future. That's on the 16th. Okay, so this should get you working right here for what you want to do. And you can stop watching the video now if this makes you happy. However, let me show you how I would set this up properly. Okay. All right. So I'm going to close this table. The first thing I'm going to do is set up the table, create a uh, table design. All right. I've got my ID. That'll be my auto number. Again, the patient's info. I'll just put first name in here. Okay. We'll put in here exposure exposure date that'll be a date time again no spaces i'm going to put exposure type in here but i'm going to make that a number okay now with only these two values i'm just going to use one and two okay if you have multiple different types you can set up another table and relate them together all right but since we only have the two one and two is just fine I don't like putting text in there because when you've got text in your table, what if someone doesn't spell positive right? Now it's not going to work. All right. This is what's called normalizing your data. You, you shouldn't have repetitive copies of data in here. The word positive, for example. All right. This should be a value, one or two. Okay. Or if you only want to, if you're, if you're sure you're only going to ever possibly have two values, use a yes, no value. All right. In fact, that's for this example, that's probably even better. Let me put this back to positive here. All right. Instead of that, let's do let's do um, let's do is positive. Okay. And that'll be a yes or no value. See if they're positive. If they're not, right? True, or we'll say yes and no. Yes equals positive. And then we'll say no equals contact only, or something like that. If you think there's a possibility you might have other fields in here, then don't use yes no. Use it. Use a long integer. Right, value one, two, three. Then you set up another table with your what these values mean. One is positive, two is contact only, three is negative, whatever. That's an exposures table, so I assume this is all people that have been exposed. <laughs> now, I don't store the follow-up date in this table. I'm going to use a query to do it. Why? You don't want to store calculated values in your tables 99% of the time. There are some exceptions. This is not one of them. Okay, so we're going to save this. I'll call this my exposure T, I like to end all my tables in T. Why? Watch my free Access 101 class when you have some time. I know you're busy. I know doctors and nurses are, are very, very busy people. But I've got a three-hour long free Access Beginner tutorial, and I talk about all the reasons why I do things the way I do. All right? Define your primary key, yes. So now in my Exposure T table, this is what it looks like. All right? I've got Joe. I can't type today. Joe, Sue, Bill. Okay? Exposure date, 1-1, one, 2-1, one, one. let's put 3-1 for Bill. Okay, actually, yeah, no, I don't think it was exposed in here in, in January. But anyways, all right, a positive there and a positive there. Okay, save that, close it up. Now, how do I calculate my follow-up date? We're going to make a query. Create, query design. Okay, I'm going to bring over my exposure t-table, just like this. Okay. Now down here, I'm going to bring in the star that brings in all the fields. Down here, I'm going to make a calculated query field called follow up date. And that's going to be the same thing we had before. If, now here we have a single value called is positive. Okay, so I'm just going to say if is positive, the default is equals true. So just if is positive, comma, this will be exposure date plus 11 comma, exposure date, plus 15. And that's that easy. Right, I'll zoom in a little bit for you so you can see it, right? Follow-up date, if is positive, right? If is positive equals true, then, comma, exposure date plus 11, comma, exposure date plus 15. All right, and when you save your query, I'll call it exposure Q, and run that. You can see there's your values. 
same as before. If you think there's a possibility of having multiple different exposure types, all right, let's go back to my exposure T here, design view. All right, let's say you don't have is positive. All right, delete that. Let's say you've got uh, exposure, exposure type ID. That'll be a number. Let's say we got three values, one, two, and three. We got, let's say we got positive, negative, and contact only. All right, so I'm going to save that. Okay, now I'm going to make another table. This is basically getting into simple relationships here. Another table. Okay, this will be my, uh, usually I name my IDs, but for quick videos, I don't bother. This will be exposure type ID. That'll be a, uh, an auto number. All right, and then we'll just say uh, description. Okay, now in this table, you could put a value in here to, um, to determine what the follow-up is. So follow-up days, let's call it. The number of days to follow up. All right, so save this. This will be my exposure type T. All right, primary key, there you go. So let's say in here, this is where you'd put positive, and you can make it all caps if you want, it doesn't matter. All right, follow up in 11 days. All right, let's say contact only. That's a 15 day follow up. And let's say negative, you still wanna check with these people in 20 days. Okay, save that. So you got one, two, and three. Now you come back to your exposure table. I would, if you're using multiple tables now, I would rename this to exposure ID, just in case you, when you get into relationships and you see, you gotta see, okay, which ID is this? It's better to have them named like that. All right, now your exposure type ID is gonna be a number from one to three. All right, so you come in here, you say, okay, Joe was positive, Sue was contact only, and Bill was negative. Okay, save that. Now my exposure queue is going to be completely different, so delete that. Okay, create, query design. Now you want to bring in both queries, so exposure T and exposure type T, just like that. Now access will make a little relationship line between them. Right, this exposure ID in this table is the same as the exposure ID over here. Now watch how simple this is. Bring in the exposure ID, first name, their exposure date, okay? The description and the follow-up days from over here. Now let's save this as my exposure queue. All right, when you run it, you see all the relevant data. Okay, Joe, exposure date, positive description, right? Follow-up days is here. Now it's just simply a matter of adding this value and this value. Okay, so right here, you say follow up date colon, that means this is a calculated field. Follow up date is, okay, the exposure date plus follow up days, the number of days there. And it's handy because, like I said, access treats whole numbers as a value of one day. That's a very, very powerful feature that you can utilize. If you want to add weeks, you can add seven. If you want to add months, then you have to use date add. And I've got whole lessons on date add. I'm not going to bother going over it here. I'll, I'll put some uh, extra links to some stuff like the if function, calculated query fields, date add, uh, relationships. I got free videos on all this stuff on my YouTube channel and on my website. Okay, so if you want to learn more how to do this properly, like I said, I know you're busy. I know you just probably want to take your table and get it working. All right, but if you want to build it properly, if you're planning on using this database long term, it might it might behoove you to take a step back and rebuild it properly. You'll have less problems in the long run, trust me. Okay, so I hope that shows you what you need to go forth and help fight the virus. Uh, if you have any other questions, post them in the comments below or contact me on my website. I'll put some contact information at the end of the video here or check the description below. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, live video and chat sessions, and other perks. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different perks that are available. Silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. But don't worry, these tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making them, and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a like and share. Click on the subscribe button to subscribe to my channel and be notified of any new releases. Check for additional resources down below the video. Click the show more button and you'll see a list of other links to other videos, downloads, 
resources, lessons, and lots more. If you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, it's three hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1, and that's free for my members. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my Tech Help page, and you can post your question there. Also, be sure to stop by my Access Forum on my website. And also look for me on Facebook, Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross with AccessLearningZone.com. Thanks for learning with me, and I'll see you next time.